Okay, as I mentioned before, um, these second order PDEs are very hard to solve and very hard to find its analytic solutions depending on what's the order, what's the, um, how many independent variables and stuff. So here we're gonna assume that we have a very particular type of solution. So let's assume that you, your solution is in the form of a product of X and Y. So here it's not saying that u equals just x times y, but it's um, u equals to a function of purely just x times to uh, times a function of purely made of uh, a, a function that is purely made of y. So the big x is a um, OD, uh, is, is a ordinary um, function, meaning that it's only depending on x, single one independent variable. And the big Y is also a function that solely depends on Y. Okay, so let's assume our solution looks like this. So of course you can do this for any uh, function. This is when I give you a hint that this is the solution is gonna look like, then you can find it by um, doing the form, uh, the transformation like like here. So, if we have u equals to big X times big Y, then d a partial u over partial X is you're gonna use a chain rule on this, right? So this is the derivative with respect to X, and then since this big Y doesn't have any X involved in it, so it's like a constant. You just multiply it. And then um, similarly, you have partial u over partial y. So this is x is like a constant here. And then y is the only thing that's associating with the independent variable y. So you have y prime here. And then uh, for the second order, um, so you have the partial u square um, over x square. So this is also, you are going to have x double prime times y. And then similarly, x times y double prime. Okay, you might be asking why isn't there a second order term like this, right? So what if I do this? Um, so in here, um, this is the special type that we were talking about since your U only consists of X. Um, so it's a separable uh, functions of X and Y. Uh, once you see this term, it's not possible to um, separate your functions entirely um, according to the variables. And so you are seeing this in the next slides when we're doing a, a, an example of this. So once you see this term, um, it's not um, possible to use, to assume that your solution only um, has, is, your solution is in the form of a product of functions of X and function of Y. So once you see this, you know that this assumption is not valid. So the only terms that you see in the second order um, PDEs are these four terms or, uh, or yeah, or you. Yeah, so when you see this mixed um, fashion, then uh, you can't use the separation of variable method. Okay, so with that said, let's move on to um, the example. Okay, so here we have an example. Um, let's take a look at this, um, this question here. So find the product solutions of the second order um, derivative with respect to x um, equals to four times the first order derivative with respect to y. So let's first um, assume that, so this is my u equals to x equals x times y. Right, so um, if you wanted to be very careful, this u is a function of x, y, right? So you can write it like this. So uh, like we said, when you take the derivative um, twice with respect to x, then you get, what is, what is this term? This term is x double prime times y. So I'm omitting the X and Y's. I'm just assuming that you know that the big X only consists with X, big Y only has Y. 
Okay, so that's the first term. And then we have du, so partial u over partial y, the first order term. So this is x times y prime. Okay, so to assemble all of these up, we have x double prime times y equals to four times x y prime. So what we can do here is that we can um, di divide the x terms and the y term to make sure that uh, on the left hand side we only have x and the, on the right hand side we only have y. Okay, so if this is the case, let's assume that there is a ratio between them. So let's use another color. So um, if your left hand side only has x, right hand side only have y. So let's think about it. Um, is there any possibilities that we get a non-constant ratio? So um, let me ask it this way. So here on the left-hand side, you are only going to get something with x in it or, or a polynomial of x. And on the right-hand side, you are only going to get a polynomial of y. So if they are equal to each other, the only possibility is that you get a constant here. It can't be any orders of x, any orders of y, because if you have a polynomial of x, then it can't equal to the polynomial of y, right? You can't equal to um, the ratios between y prime and y. So the only time that you're going to get these two equal to each other is that you will have a constant here. So here we're going to assume that um, this constant I call lambda is either um, there are three possibilities. You can either have lambda equals to zero, lambda less than zero, meaning lambda is negative. So when lambda is negative, I can say that uh, lambda, let me just write it like this, lambda is equal to negative of um, alpha square, so what, whatever alpha is, right? Alpha is a constant, then alpha square is a positive number, so negative of alpha square is less than zero, or lambda equals to alpha square, that's bigger than zero. So only three different possibilities, okay? All right, so now let's continue with this. Um, so here we have different types of, well, actually before um, this, let me add one more sentence. So once we have this, uh, we should have two different um, ODEs. Okay, so what you're gonna have is this two, right? So you have two different ODEs. Um, the first equation, it only has X as its independent variable. And the second equation only has Y as its independent variable. Okay, so, and they are both um, affiliated with lambda this constant that we um, assumed, okay? So um, now to solve two ODEs is much similar to, uh, than, than to solve one PDE. So let's, gonna, uh, let, let's continue with this. So this is our new question now. Okay, case one, when we have lambda is equal to zero, right? Lambda equals to zero, then you plug into the two ODEs. So this, this gives us um, X, double prime equals to zero and y prime equals to zero. So when you integrate this, right? So you, you can solve for each equation. So integrated, you get x equals to uh, c1 plus c2x. So c1 and c2 are both constants and y just equal to c3, right? So you, you do one time of integration on y and then two times integrations on x. So this is what you get. And you remember, we assume that u equals to x times y, so you, it will be c1 plus c2x times c, c3. And if you want to be very uh, efficient with the naming, so you can say that uh, this is just a1, which one constant, plus another constant times x, right? So you combine c2 and c3 and call that just one single, single constant, and you combine c1 and c3, uh, that is your a1. Okay, so easy enough for the first, um, for the first case. So now let's move on to another case. 
So let's see for the second case where you have um, x equals to negative alpha square, meaning that lambda is a negative number. So we again plug into the two ODEs, x double prime equals to negative. So here we direct, directly um, changed the mm, lambda with, with um, negative x, negative alpha square. I think this is what it says. Uh, or maybe, um, lambda x, yeah. This should be plus when you move to here. Well, okay, so I think there is a typo here. We can just assume that um, lambda is positive alpha in this, positive alpha square in this case. Uh, so I think this is, um, so then the, these can be, um, can be, um, yeah, I think it should be plus, right? So uh, this is, uh, the third case in, in my writing, in my order. Okay, so uh, lambda equals to plus alpha square. So you when you plug into this, you get um, x double prime minus four alpha square x equals to zero. And then when you plug into this, you get y prime minus alpha square times y equals to zero. Okay, so here you can use some calculators to help you to integrate this. Um, so x is a very, uh, is very, ugly function here, you have cosh and cinch. And y is also this, um, y it looks actually a, a little better. This is just an exponential function. And then you can um, combine these together um, by multiplying them and um, also to categorize all these constants and make sure that you have minimum amount of um, constants when you are naming this, okay? So your u is also consists of two parts. Um, these two parts come from x because your x has two parts, right? Uh, just like before, your x has two parts and your y just has this one part and you combine these together, you get uh, the solution here. Okay, so u is this a to e to the alpha, alpha square y cosh uh, two alpha x plus b two e to the alpha square y cinch to alpha x. So here, um, I think you might need some help in figuring out this. Feel free to use any types of your um, calculators to help you do this. Okay, so moving on, we have a third case, right? So when, um, when actually in this case, it should be negative, right? So in, in this case, second case here. So if um, lambda is negative, then you plug into this and you will have a x double prime plus um, four times alpha square x and then y prime plus alpha square y equals to zero. So again here, um, this is, you can use any one of your calculator. You can use uh, also um, MATLAB to help you to solve this. So you get cosine and sine and y, this is pretty much the same. You just have a negative sign on the exponential and you combine these together, you get a three and in this case, b three. Yeah, this book has a lot of typos. Yeah, so th this should be b three corresponding to this, okay? All right, so those are your three cases. I think uh, the most important thing for you to remember is that we have, um, we have this part, you assume that your solution is a product of purely a function of x and purely a function of y. And you observe that in your ODE, in your PDE, you only have uh, either the second order derivative with respect to x or second order derivative with respect to y or this, uh, the linear uh, terms, not the uh, mixed terms, meaning that you have um, partial u square over partial x times partial y. So once you have these, um, you just say that um, it's not possible to separate the variables. Therefore, you can solve it using the separation of variable methods. So in your homework, there will be questions that is non-separable. So you, you have to state that clearly that um, you, know, you, you can't do that. 
And if you can, then this is the procedure. You figure out the two ODEs and make sure that you have three different cases and you uh, discuss all of these. And once you get more confident with this, you can directly write this as equals to a plus or minus um, alpha square or plus or minus uh, lambda square. So whatever you want, uh, you, can, you can jump this from here to here. You can directly say that we have um, this equals to plus or minus alpha square. That's also fine. All right, so make sure that you walk through this and uh, look at this carefully and make sure that you understand how to get uh, these different types of solutions. Okay. 